Welcome back to the Fort Johnson Podcast. I'm your host, and today we have an exciting episode lined up for you. Joining us is Jacob Babconnect, an expert in his field and is dedicated service member who's taking on the challenge of earning the Expert Field Medical Badge, or EFMB. We'll dive into Jacob's military occupational specialty, the rigorous process of earning the EFMB, and what it takes to excel in the demanding world of field medicine. So whether you're a fellow service member, a military enthusiast, or just curious about the journey, you won't want to miss this conversation. Let's get started. <music> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are watching this podcast, I'm Jeff England from the Fort Johnson Public Affairs Office, and we are in the Fort Johnson Public Affairs Podcast Studio. And with me today, I have a, a very special guest. His name is Jacob Babkinek, and he's a specialist. He works over at the uh, Bain Jones Army Community Hospital as a physical therapy tech. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, Jeff. How are you doing? Oh, I'm... Okay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, it was a normal Monday, right? Something like that, yeah. The, uh, so uh, why don't you tell me right off the bat, um, let's just figure out exactly what you are. Um, I know you are field medicine, but you're in physical therapy mm -hmm. uh, to begin with, or overall you're in physical therapy and you went out and got your EFMB, which is amazing. I mean, it's you only get uh, like one one person a year worldwide only gets this every 10 <laughs> years and it was this guy no i'm kidding yeah, no. <laughs> i would love it to be that way but no but uh no the uh you're a physical therapist what is your what does your day include over at the um over at uh bjack so usually I, you know get in there pretty early just work on my notes and then uh, at eight o'clock we start seeing patients 30 minute per person and then um, yeah, we just go through therapy, right? Just like mostly we see post-op. That's like the main thing that we see at BJAC. Usually they'll go to like an H2F um, somewhere else on the post, but we see more of like the post-op people and uh, we take care of them there. It's it's good, you know? Yeah, so I, I, if if I was to go to BJAC, uh, I'm going to have some surgery on my so shoulder. I would have to go see you too, and you would make me do push-ups and you'll, stuff. You'll eventually see me and I'll, yeah. I'll come beat you up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I, pre work out. I appreciate it. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it's very rewarding job though. Oh, that's, that's awesome. And, uh, did you, when you were back before you joined, um, before you joined the army, did it, was this something that you had interest in doing in, uh, the future or, um, was it something that they offered you and, um, uh, made it look, uh, interesting and you mm -hmm. chose it that way? Actually, I kind of stumbled on this job, actually. Um, I already went to college, and then I um, worked a little bit. I worked in construction as well as fire investigation, and I knew I always wanted to join the military, and it came to that point where I, I couldn't see myself really doing what I was doing currently, and I was like, you know, might as well give it a shot since I'm still kind of young, you know, still spry and athletic. So I, I went to the recruiter. Uh, I was really planning on being an MP, but, um, you know, my recruiter came up to me and he was like, hey, like, I see you're like athletic. Um, there's this physical therapy job. I rarely see it like active duty. Like, I really think you should do that. And I was like, you know, that sounds I just like that sounds cool. Like, I'll, I'll try that out and ended up just absolutely loving the job really fits my personality and everything. So I'm really glad that that recruiter was really looking out for me there. So what'd you go to college for? I went to college college for uh, criminal justice. So that's why I was thinking the MP route. I was like, you know, I already have experience in the field already. So that was what I was more leaning towards. But already with the little bit of taste that I had, I did like the police academy. And it kind of was something that I wasn't really passionate about at that point afterwards. Yeah, I've, I've, I don't know many people that are working in the career <laughs> field that they went to college <laughs> for. Yeah, I know I didn't. Diverge somewhere else <laughs> yeah. along the lines. It's like, you have a degree in this and you're doing that? <laughs> no. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, when you got in, are you, so you got good scores on your ASVAB, I, I imagine. Yeah, good enough. Good, good enough for the Army. Good <laughs> enough. It's like... <laughs> Got a medical job, so so uh, you got you had to go through school and where was uh, where did you go to? I basic training for the army is like multiple places. Yes, there's correct. 
bunch of different places, and in the Air Force, it's just one place. Oh, really? Yes. Everyone that goes through BASIC goes through Lackland Air Lackland Force. Lackland in Texas. So uh, you went through BASIC where? Fort Sill, probably the best one you can go to. Oh, hey. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then you went on to your, uh, I guess, it's AIT. Yes. And that would be your tech school. AIT, uh, where was that? That was uh, Fort Sam Houston. So they bust us right down from Fort Sill right after basic training. It was like an eight, nine-hour drive. Right into I feel it. your pain. Yeah. I feel your pain. I had to go from San Antonio up to uh, Wichita Falls. Oh, really? So like we went through uh, deep in the heart of Texas. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I slept for most of it, that. so <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really see a lot. wasn't yeah. really sightseeing. Yeah. So the uh, so how long was how long was your school? Um, it was, we got there in about February, and I left in August. So I want to say it was about six, seven months for my phase one, and then I ended up going to phase two in Hawaii. So, oh, there's a. Uh, <laughs> I lucked out there. Talk, talk about no time for uh, sightseeing. <laughs> yeah, no. So, um, I was in Hawaii for three, uh, a little over three months there, and then that honestly, at the end of all of AIT and basic training, it was a full year of being in the military service already. So. Oh wow, that's a lot. When you were in, uh, when you were in Hawaii, did you go to the Dole uh, Pineapple Farm? No, uh, I oh. wanted to. I've seen pictures on the walls in the hospitals. Oh, so. you, you should have <laughs> gone. They have. There's the only one place that you can get pineapple ice cream. Oh, really? And that's Ooh. at the Dole Pineapple uh, Plantation. It's oh. very, very good stuff. I, I, uh, should, I gotta go back now. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you do. Go back. I did have a pineapple there, though. So, oh, of course, it probably was from there. So, you can't well, get I'm, any I'm sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be bad if they imported that. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's like it's like crawfish here, you know. Yeah, it's like we import Genuinely. it from. It's like crawfish and shrimp. You import it, and it's yeah. like, come on, <laughs> we, can we don't need right to import here. it. This is where it's at. <laughs> so, how long have you been uh, stationed? Is this your first first yes. installation? Yes, this is my first duty station. I got here December eighth, so I'm coming up on my first. Oh, uh, wow. one year. So. Time to put in for uh, another assignment, or are you going to be here for another year? I'm kind or of three years. Yeah, I'll probably be here for a little bit longer. I mean, I really love it. Honestly, it's it was like a hidden gem for me. Like um, a lot of people, you know, give it a bad rap, you know, but I think that's also the box kind of gives it the bad rap. You come here for rotation, and yeah, I, I don't know, I don't understand how many people, how so many people can judge this installation off of. <laughs> having to be here for training, yeah, rotation, which is yeah. meant to be a bad experience yeah, exactly. <laughs> or a, a, you know, a, a harsh environment and all that stuff. But, you know, you make all your mistakes here, then mm -hmm. you go over to where you have to go and you don't make the mistakes. Exactly. That's, that's the best place, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> that but, not make. yeah, no, for sure. I, I mean, I've been very lucky, great command. Um, they've really just embraced me and like everything I've tried to work for, they let me do it. And they just really pushed me in to be my best, honestly. Nice. So. And uh, what made you want to go for, if you're in physical therapy, isn't a EFMB more for like field medics and, and people that are out in the field uh, taking care of people, bandaging them up, giving them tourniquets and mm -hmm. stuff like that? What made you want to get that EFMB badge when your main job is to um, hurt people in recovery? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I'm part of the medical field, right? And so they offer it to all medical fields. But, um, you know, I feel like I really believe that since I'm in the medical field and I'm in the army and when I'm deployed, I want to be capable of doing more than just my job, you know? So if I need to like do something where I'm in that situation that I'm capable of doing that and I'm not like useless in that sense, you know? Like I'm glad I can do my job, physical therapy, but I'm also glad that I can do more and be more of a use in a deployment situation. Now, was it? Uh, do you find that it was harder for you to get the EFMB because uh, your because of your career or your MOS? Uh, actually, it's supposed to be easier to get EFMB if you're not a, a field medical uh, person. So why is that? So they usually the, the EFMBisms is what we call. Um, so it's very different than the typical. I'm going to treat somebody on the field like. I got to do this. Like, so if you see somebody with like a wound to their stomach, you're going to like immediately start doing that one because that's like you see it, you treat it. And so, but for E, F, and B, you really got to, there's, it's just steps. You're basically going through a script and it's a lot of memorization, a lot of just not forgetting, being very particular about things. So a lot of the 
whiskey is kind of like getting that mode of being a whiskey, and so they kind of skew from the script, and that's how they kind of get them. And a whiskey is the field medic? Yeah, so that's the field medical. That 68 whiskey is what I'm referring to, yeah. I got you. That's, <clears> a, that's a 68 W for uh, everyone out there <laughs> because the military uses special letters and, and <laughs> words for each letter. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, very different. I did not know any of this stuff joining. Oh, so now it's like you you went through the police academy and stuff. So yeah. you have the you have the knowledge that uh, the police have a different alphabet than the military. Oh, I did not. Learn that. You didn't know that? It's Adam, <laughs> Boy, Charles, David, Edward, Ooh, Frank. That's a little where, weird. Yeah, where we use uh, Alpha, Beta, Charlie, Delta. Yeah. Echo. Yep. It's uh, they did it. I think it was meant specifically to differentiate oh. the military from the police but that's where one adam 12 you know adam 12 yeah yeah, yeah yeah that's where that all comes from yeah no i remember running through like training like we used to pull over cars like practicing that and we would just make up like if we saw a b we would say like boy like <laughs> it, there wasn't like a script exactly it was just kind of like whatever kind Which of just happens to be b is boy yeah <laughs> b is boy in that sense yeah adam boy charles david see i get him i get him mixed up now but i'm i'm <laughs> doing a lot better now <laughs> so how how many days was the uh was the efmb um uh what do you call that the testing the whole uh, event the whole event um it was so it was a two-week train up so i got there the 4th of october and then i think we finished up like the 17th i don't know those probably dates are wrong but um <laughs> it was two weeks of training um and then it was one week of testing out so it was a total of three weeks i was there great experience so you had to go through training before and then another week worth of uh, of testing? Yes. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, so usually we even train beforehand. Like I knew a lot of my information already from the best squad that I went to, and we tested a lot on the whole EFMB because you were able to get EFMB during best squad. So we trained all just like trying to get it for that. But so I really fell – like I was already pre-prepared for this before even going, so it was helped and, me out a lot. And what badge is the EFMB now? Do you have it yet? Do you have it on your uniform, or are I, you out of uniform? I, I got it right here. All right, this sweet. Right here. <laughs> yeah, no, I put that on as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, does that makes you more marketable to uh, other units, right? Yes. Basically. Yeah. If you see that, usually they're like, "Oh, he he knows his field pretty well." So. Um, so you got to be ready for questions for whenever someone wants to ask you something. You got to you got to know what's going on. But um, I feel confident for like a lot in my field. So well, that's good. Now, uh, when do you come up for your specialist? You've been here for a year. When should you be eligible to uh, start looking at uh, sergeant? Um, so I promoted May twenty second of, of this year. year. So I'm about to hit my six months. In November 22nd, that was that will also be my two-year mark. So that will put me right in the window of my secondary zone. So I will be able to promote at that point. I just got to go to the board. I have points. My points are very low right now, too. So Well, usually in the first <laughs> the first round, it's usually a little low, especially yeah. in the Air Force. When I was going through, it was, uh, uh, it was impossible to get promoted yeah. the first time around because uh, yeah, yeah. The, the points were so high. What were yours at? Oh, I don't even remember. It was at out of reach. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't reach that. Yeah, well, mine's 27. 27. No, ours Which are is like hundreds. And I, I, you basically have to breathe, and you're, uh, you're eligible. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm sure there's – you still got to go to the uh, the board, the though, board, and yes. you don't want to mess up with the board. Yeah, that's the big thing right now. So Yeah, now I hear that uh, the bo or, uh, boss, Better Opportunities for Single Soldiers, mm -hmm. helps out and, and uh, can help with uh, the board. Yes, and that's correct. Do you, go, do you participate in boss? Uh, I do not. Um, I have a really good uh, staff back in rehab, so like they were putting mock boards up for me and everything. Oh, nice. So um, a lot of people already like we use like past um, questions that they use at boards. So I'm able to like just study off of that, and they ask me, you know, scenario based stuff. So it's um, it's really good training that they do for me. But boss also does that as well. I just you know I feel more comfortable doing it the rehab and the people I know. So that's, <laughs> it's easier as well. Cause I don't have to go as far. As well. Yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> when you have a good support group, I mean, that's, yeah. that's always, that's always helpful. Mm -hmm. The, uh, so, um, in your, why don't you take us through, uh, a day 
when you get to when you get to work in the morning, uh, you know, of course, it's normal army stuff with PT and and uh, getting ready and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You get to work and you have to start. You just get. Uh, customers patients that come in and you have to go take them through a whole thing yep it's just like uh it's pretty like basic across the board uh, i come in and we just i get my patient list usually our patient list is extended like a month and a half out so if i want to take leave it's got to be well in advance you can't put passes anything early but um yeah no you just you got your basic set of exercises i check what they're doing how they've been doing in their you know, rehab, and then we like to always progress, you know, so we always like to stay away from pain, so we don't want to work in pain at all. I don't like pain either. Yeah, but there's some pain that we have to do, like the soft tissue is not soft at all. No. <laughs> it is pain. It's a lot of pain. I've seen those uh, deep tissue massage. It's oh, like, oh, yeah. no, 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 no. Just surface tissue, please. Yeah. <laughs> Usually a lot of people get excited. They're like, oh, soft oh, tissue. That, that sounds great. And then I'm like digging. And I, I love... It's bad, but I love just like really digging in there and beating them up, and they're like screaming and like gasping for air. But but I'm sure you also like to see how far they progress and how oh, much yeah. they recover. They're, and it's always afterwards they're like, oh yeah, it does feel better, you know, like <laughs> it does feel better, but it does hurt, you know. There's pain in it, but there's also benefit you're gonna get out it, at the end. It's gotta hurt to be feel better. Yeah, you know. So there's, there's a song. It's uh, you gotta be cruel to be kind. I did not know that song. Yeah, there's a song. You gotta be cruel <laughs> How does it to be kind. Go? <laughs> you gotta be cruel to be kind in the right measure. <laughs> it's true. It's it's true. Look it up. Anyway. <laughs> so uh what are your goals for um for your career? I mean, are you looking at uh, you sound like you appreciate it and enjoy being in the military. What are your goals um, so far that you that you can see yourself doing? Yeah, I just I just want to keep improving, you know, so just always keep going up. I don't want to like be stagnant too for too long. It's always good to like be good at your job. And I feel like I love to improve, ask questions, get good at my job. But I also like to be a good soldier, too, as well. So I like to go to my schools. Um, planning on going to another school here soon hopefully um but yeah just always improving um i'm not really sure what else is going on (laughs) yeah no but what what's the new uh what's the next school that you go to or do you even know i don't know yet but (laughs) my sergeant major has high hopes for me and he's been telling me that he's got something brewing for me so (laughs) i would have to say uh maybe if you're lucky be knock What's that? I don't even know. They don't have B-Knock anymore? Oh. What's that? It's NCO school. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, my, BLC? Uh, okay. Uh, basic, basic leadership course? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, it used to be B-Knock. Oh, so. okay. I did not know that. <laughs> you, you had B-Knock, A-Knock, <laughs> uh, senior NCO, then PLDC. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, after I promote... Or maybe uh, I'll go before I promote. It depends. It's just you know. I think well, sometimes it's usually a prerequisite before you can yeah. pin it. You can you have to make sure that you got mm. all your ducks in a row. And yeah. apparently you seem to have all your ducks in a row. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they always change regulation though. I think they just changed it so you don't have to go before. Just as long as it's like within the year, I yeah. believe. So. So what about uh, uh, furthering your education? Do you plan on going back to college or getting any uh, further? college courses down yeah so um actually me and my ncyc we actually want to become ptas so right now i'm just a pt tech so technically i'm not really licensed <laughs> that sounds so, kind of bad so you're a ptt <laughs> and you want to move to pta yes and that physical therapy assistant that's okay physical therapy assistant not yes. the uh the parent tech. teacher association yes so, okay <laughs> <laughs> but um so technically i work under the pt's license so I don't have my own licensure. So um, being a PTA, you you're offic- like you get your hours in, and then it's good on the civilian side. Now you can actually be like, oh, I worked two years as a PTA, and I have experience in this job. So right now, technically, I it doesn't count as experience since I don't have my licensure, which is weird. I mean, I could still say I do, but it's, <laughs> it's like that gray area. But So I'm working on doing that as well as I would love to go the officer route. 
because I feel like if I'm going to st stay in and do 20, I might as well go officer, get get a good pay. So hopefully green to gold is in my near future too as well. So yeah, I would. Re that's you know I'm I'm always highly recommending uh, two paths: uh, stay in for 20 years. It goes by <laughs> a lot faster than yes. you're going to remember. <laughs> and um, and green to gold is is for people that especially people in certain positions like uh medical uh and admin and you know management that kind of thing yeah always you want to go green to gold and if you want to be a pilot and yeah you know, and stuff like that officer, <laughs> yeah do that yeah. but yeah I, I think if i'm doing my 20 i don't think it's going to be enlisted all the way you know as long i i would love to i like to work for a living you know but <laughs> officer and warrant officers seems more pleasing to me so yeah, there's uh, it, along with that comes a lot more responsibility too. Oh, so sure. where you might mess up in your 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 uh, your job, and you just say, oh no, they told me to do yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> more of that. <laughs> no more of that. <laughs> so uh, what else? What are some of your interests? I mean, uh, you work you work all day. Uh, like what five in the morning? I'm sure your day starts uh, five, six, <laughs> seven in the morning. Whatever you go out, you you're. PT and then you go to work and then you uh, then you work all day and you come home. What do you like doing on uh, on your time, your spare time? Yeah, so actually, props of Medac, we have PT on our own. So ah, <laughs> I wake up at like six thirty. <laughs> so he's still out there doing all the PT and making sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 no. So I love weightlifting. So that's why I feel like this job is really great for me. I love weightlifting. I love the mechanics. I love the whole like just environment of it all. So usually after after work, I come home, I kind of just decompress for like an hour, and then I head off to the gym every day, probably one to two hours to, at the gym, just working out. And then I also play soccer here on post as well, so that gives me my cardio so I can stay agile, which is on Wednesdays and Fridays if everybody wants to show up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I like to do that. And then I'm... I, I like video games too as well. I'm a little well, bit of a doesn't? gamer. Yeah, so <laughs> Call of Duty. So nice. Do you do that? Do you do the online th uh, Call of Duty online and and uh, what are those uh, the the tournaments and, and yeah, teams no, and I, I, I'm very competitive too as well. So I'm always competitive, rank play kind of stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I used to be into World of Warcraft until oh, okay. yeah, until yeah, yeah. I I moved to a place where we didn't have. Uh, Internet, uh, <laughs> good internet. So now I'm on a hot spot. And it's yeah, like, oh, no. great. So, oh yeah, it definitely makes a. It's a deal breaker sometimes. Oh yeah. Sure. But yeah, those are honestly. I'm pretty basic human being. I don't really like to do that much. I, I'm honestly in a good routine now. I I, I feel like I'm getting older for sure. <laughs> where I'm like, I just like to do the same thing every day. I feel like I feel healthy. So. Yeah, now's the time to do all of that stuff because yeah, yeah. when you get as old as me, you're going to be broken. <laughs> Just, yeah, I'm you'll, already, be, you'll be your own. You'll be your own uh, patient. Yeah, I'm already feeling the knee pain already. So <laughs> now let's. Are, what about uh, airborne? Do you have a chance to to be to jump out of planes and stuff like that, or oh, is yeah. that something for uh, other people? So I mean, I would love to. I really want to stack my badges for sure. Yeah, <laughs> try to try to get as many as I can. Kind of you know have some chest candy, but um. Definitely, if I have the opportunity, I will, for sure. But that's kind of one of the things where it's like, do you really need it? You know, unless yeah. I'm part of like an airborne unit, you're not really, it's hard to get that, you know, badge. So um, it's obviously, I'll, I'll take whatever school I can get, you know, brought in my education as much as I can. But um, some things just kind of not possible. Well, you never know. Maybe, you're, maybe your next assignment, you'll be uh, Yeah, no, for something. sure. Yeah, yeah no, I, I'm, I'm hoping to in the near future. But um, yeah, it's just like I said, it's it's just something that is a little bit of pull. Now, what kind of uh, volunteering opportunities do you have? I mean, that that helps with the uh, the promotion and the points and stuff like that. So, yeah. have you? Do you have any like volunteer uh, opportunities? Yeah. So, um, I um, the CYS, I believe that's. Yeah, I, I don't know what that means, but um, <laughs> child youth services. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that. <laughs> no, but um, they had the soccer, and I was um assistant coach for that. Oh, nice! It, it was great. I I did the twelve and under kids, and it was great. It was actually such a rewarding experience, just working with kids, and there's just you know it's an amazing experience. You know, that was my first time really working with kids too, as well. And I have to say, it was very, very enjoyable. Yeah, John runs a good uh, a good oh, program. Yeah, over yeah. There. It, was, it was ran really well too. Is that well, 
ran really, really well too as well. But uh, <laughs> sorry, ran, ran well too as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it, everything they they supplied everything. So you know, all, all I had to do is really just show up to practices and to the games, and everything else was really supplied for the kids to have all the necessity they need for the, the games. So it was really good. Now, I'm sure they need uh, referees too and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, they had all of it. All of it was like volunteer based too as well. So I mean, it was. It was great. It was actually a really rewarding experience. Well, it so. sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> and um, as well as uh, for the hospital, I do the aerosol train-ups too as well. So I like to do that. It's They have one every other week. And so I just really work on We do runs, rucks, just kind of preparing people to go to aerosol. So we're really just training people to send from our hospital. So, uh, well... Your your physical therapy and most of the uh, the people in there without getting into HIPAA and all that stuff. What career field do you see a lot of, uh, or the most of? You, well, we is get there a- like because I'm sure <laughs> it, airborne is going to be all kinds of roughness on their backs oh, yeah. and knees. We get and a stuff lot like of that. eleven Bravo. That's yeah. like main course right there. As yeah. well as Geronimo is like attached to us, mm-hmm. so we're like the first person they go to anyways, even if they don't have like surgical intervention. So. Um, but that's the most I see is really from there. Airborne injuries, a lot of knee, lower back. That's kind of like yeah. the main thing. ACL is also like a really big one we see. Yeah. See, see, I'm always trying to give out people or give people uh, advice, especially on lifting, because I got to yeah. do a lot of lifting around here. And it's like the, the secret behind lifting is to lift with a quick jerking, twisting yes, that's motion. that's exactly what it is. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> lift, with your, lift with your knees and, or with your back, your back and leave yeah. your knees completely out of it. Yeah. So, yeah, honestly, that's a lot. <laughs> I, I see it a lot. Like, uh, we'll come in, we'll do some squats or something, and it's just, it's bad all across the board, you know? And so I think the big thing for people was just to take it slow. Everybody wants to lift a lot, you know? Yeah. And the big thing is just slow it down, get the right technique first, and then just start low weight and just slowly work your way up because, one, it's going to be great for your joints. You're going to be pulling much more weight efficiently. And so, you know, a lot of people just, and that's how a lot of injuries come, you know, deadlifting, squats, all that stuff. And so that's what, I mean, I had to take a whole break. I just dropped like 50 pounds on all my like bench press, squat and all that just to like work on specifically good posture and technique. And so I I can't hone it enough because we see so many people come in for just like lower back pain or knee pain, just general. And so, yeah, that's like... You guys got to do that. See, I, I <laughs> see, I'll go into the gym and I see all the weights on the racks and I say, well, that's a good place for them. And I figure why lift them and put yeah. them back down just to put them back in the rack. Yeah. They're good where they are. <laughs> right? There's no are. need to move them. Yeah, we're just moving energy for no reason. <laughs> lift right? it and put it back down. <laughs> <laughs> it was good where it was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, Jacob, it sounds like you've got a real good head on your shoulders and uh, some probably some good knees and back too because yeah. you're doing the physical <laughs> <So> therapy. <far. laughs> and uh, you got a, a great job and great opportunities uh, coming up. And I wish you the very best and congratulations on your EFMB. Uh, did you expect to make it this first time around? Ooh, I, honestly, because everybody tells me like it takes a few tries, you know. Yeah. And. We, I was like, we were already talking about like, oh, what, what's the next one kind of, but I was really trying to just stay positive in my mind. I'm like, I'm not going to have to go to a next one. Like, this is going to be the only one. And honestly, I had a really good group of people that I met down there and we just trained our butts off like 24 seven. We were training, like we would go out to the field for like 10 hours, come back, study, like rinse and repeat every day for those two weeks of train up. And I have to say we, my whole group made it. And like, it was, it was great. Like we were on the ball. So it it honestly just takes a lot of dedication for it and you can do it first try. And I'm sure you had a lot of support back at the, uh, back at BJAC. Yeah. Everybody was cheering us on. So I'm so glad that we were all able to make it me and ma'am. So nice, nice. Well, congratulations again. And I appreciate you coming in to, uh, to talk to us on the the podcast. Uh, you know, just, uh, maybe we can get you back here again and uh after your after your next badge yeah i know next badge i'll I'll tell you all about it (laughs) well thank you jeff i appreciate it all right jacob bab connect uh i appreciate you coming in and uh let's see if i got everything right here the uh but that's awesome uh if you'd like to become a uh uh what what 
MOS is it? Uh, 68 Fox. 68 Fox. If you'd like to talk to uh, be a come on 68 Fox or any other MOS, be sure to talk to a recruiter or your uh, career advisor. But in the meantime, I'm Jeff England, and uh, we'll be listening and watching at you later. <laughs> That was easy.